Hey guys, welcome to my part 2, finally, of the hidden gems for the PSP. This time, another 10 games that are as great as the last 10 we saw in the first video. And before we begin, I have something to say. I didn't include two games in the first video, and I'm not including them, them on this video, because I think they are popular, well, maybe not popular, but pretty well known nowadays amongst us JRP gamers, and those are Half Minute Hero and Grow Lancer 4 Wayfair of Time. Those are great, great JRPGs actually. I personally am a fan of Grow Lancer, I'm a fan of the Grow Lancer series, you know that. But um, I think those games, even though they are great, they are gems, but in my opinion they're not hidden. So consider them as honorable mentions. And um, also some of the games I'm about to cover right now, I've already covered them before in other videos. So don't be surprised if you see them again, if you saw them in previous videos and now you're seeing them again. So um, with all that clarified, as usual, let's begin. Number 10, Class of Heroes 2. I'm pretty sure you're wondering why I put the second game and not the first one on this top. Well, I'm sorry to say this, but I just didn't like it. I played it for a couple of hours and I was already falling asleep. Don't take me wrong, it's a good game, but I just wasn't up for it. Consider that one as an honorable mention or something. Now, the second part, I was sure I wasn't going to like it, but as soon as I started playing it, I felt it was like an improved version of the previous title. I'm not sure if it's a direct sequel or not, but it was totally a better game in terms of almost everything, including story, in my opinion. It's a dungeon crawler in first person, school simulator with generic characters to train and fight by your orders. It has its own charm, despite being a game that I probably won't end up playing for several hours in a row, but I'll come back to it from time to time. Now, this game has a lot of background, so if you're interested in knowing more about it, I suggest you take a look at a video that I'll leave at the end, which is called The Last JRPG for Every Sony Console. Number 9. Dungeon Explorer, Warrior of the Ancient Art. Like I said, there's a bunch of games in this list that I have already covered, but now I'm doing it again with a different perspective. However, not much has changed for Dungeon Explorer. I say this game was cool, and I stand by that statement. It's not a masterpiece, of course, but it's very decent. It's actually your classic RPG in which you create your character, customize it, and enter the typical world of never-ending quests, while little by little you follow the main story. It's an action RPG. You have party members who will sometimes be generic, and sometimes they won't. I know there's some, nothing amazing or special about this game, but it's a good one, and I recommend it to those in search for something light, not complicated or challenging. It's quite a balanced game and pretty likable. Number 8. Jikandia, The Timeless Land Pre Previously I said this game was cool, fun to play and very silly. Then I kept on playing it, and I realized I had spent several hours into it. For the next consecutive days, I did the same. So now I've gotta say that it's a very, very addicting action RPG that plays a like a side-scrolling platformer. You know, those kids you saw at the beginning will actually be your party members, after you, you rescue each one of them on different missions. The game plays a little similar to Half Minute Hero, in which you have a certain amount of time to beat a dungeon and or mission. However, you can fix this before entering every single one of them, but that reduces your chances of getting better items and high scores. Huh, arcade much? The story is really silly and weird. It's a comedy with tons of dumb references to all types of games, including RPGs. So overall, it's an excellent game, but not to be taken seriously. Nevertheless, trust me, it's extremely fun. Number 7. Riviera, the Promised Land Riviera is a classic in the underground world of RPGs and a hidden gem. It's a port of the Game Boy Advance game that I covered in another top 10 hidden gems for that console. 
To be honest, both versions are great, but now I kind of prefer the PSP version for obvious reasons. Slightly better graphics, some voice acting which is okay, not that good but not bad either, among other stuff. It plays like a strategy RPG, but at the same time nope, because the battle system is turn-based. The game includes a, also a dating system, nothing that big but fun nonetheless, between the main character and mostly the heroines. It was made by Sting Entertainment, one of the masters of hidden gems in the JRPG genre. Overall, Riviera is a great JRPG, challenging, one of those that gets harder the more you advance and also quite original to some extent. Whether you play the game with Advance or PSV version, it's an excellent RPG that you definitely need to check out. Number 6 on Chained Blades This is a digital only game, a dungeon crawler in first person with a story that begins quite different from what we're all used to. The more you play through it, the less you start taking it seriously because I can't help but think the whole game's a comedy. That doesn't mean it's bad, mind you. It's actually okay. Now, the game, this game plays a little different than most of your classic dungeon crawlers. It's a turn-based RPG in which your characters are joined by the monsters you recruit and are a part of your entourage. You can't control these creatures in battle, instead they will sometimes attack or take damage in your character's place. Recruiting them is most of the time a pain in the ass, but that's the only downfall I notice in this game. It's good, and if you're into bizarre and weird comedies and first-person dungeon crawlers, this is definitely an RPG that you won't want to miss. It's pretty decent, and yes, it is recommended. Number 5. Blazing Souls Accelerate Now we're getting into Idea Factory territory once again. You know I'm a big fan of this development team. I've talked about them and their games several times before. Blazing Souls is no exception and now I'm back to discuss it once more. It's a strategy RPG with a very solid story, like pretty much all of this company's games, a very challenging gameplay. That's right, the game's hard and it gets harder as you go on. I really like this game, even though I got stuck at some part where you needed to jump, but I got over it after some time and enjoyed the rest of it. The characters are amazing as a matter of fact, and so is the story like I've already said. It does play very similar to Spectral Souls or Spectral Force, but if you've never played those games before, let's just say it plays a little bit like Final Fantasy Tactics. However, here the main focus is attacking on combos, which is a classic aspect of this company's games. You select your actions during your turn, moving from character to character, and then... SLAM! They all gang up on the enemy. So, it's a very cool JRPG. It's really hard, like all these company's games, but really awesome at the same time. Number 4 goes to White Knight Chronicles Origins. I can't believe too many people overlook this game, considering the ones for the PS3, especially the first one, are pretty well known. They have never been great JRPGs or anything extraordinary, but they were somewhat successful. Which is why I'm surprised people almost completely ignore this prequel, which plays slightly different than them. You see, all three are linear games, but the PSB1 has one of those repetitive gameplays, in a good sense, where you go on around quests and more quests, following the main story every now and then. It's an action RPG, and it does have some flaws, like many other games of its kind when they're played in a portable console, but other than that, I found this to be a very addicting game. The story is cool, the characters are great, you customize your protagonist as usual and let it become a part of the main story all at once. So even if you haven't played the two White Knight Chronicles for the PS3, definitely check this one out. After all, in terms of story, it's the first game. Number 3. Mystic Chronicles Once, I've said that I had covered this excellent turn-based RPG, very retro-like, in the first Hidden Gems video. Well, I was wrong. I didn't and I should have. 
because it's amazing! If you've seen my favorite turn-based RPGs for portable consoles or my unknown JRPGs for the PSP, then you'll probably be tired of me praising this neat video game. But for those who haven't, let me tell you then how cool it is. I'll sum it all up for you. You want a good story and classic gameplay and graphics from those old NES or SNES times? Mystic Chronicles is definitely for you. You will notice, in fact, that the gameplay is very similar to those old classics, but also with some modern elements that create the perfect atmosphere for a game like this. It's very, very good. Digital only, yep, no physical copies were made for this, so the only way to play it, it will be to download it, because from what I know, the PSP online services are dead. I think this game came out for the PS Vita as well, so you might want to check it out there too. Number 2. Generation of Chaos Pandora's Reflection Oh man, when I talked about this game in the unknown PSP JRPGs part 2, I had to split it for a couple of hours. That was enough to give you an insight, recommend it and move on. Now I'm addicted to it. I'm almost at the end and I can't stop playing it! It's awesome! It's a real-time strategy RPG with a turn-based battle system in which you have to press the buttons at the right time to cause more damage to your enemies. Then it's got that conquer your enemy's base and protect your own and destroy the strategy points, characters have their own skills, abilities and weaknesses, so you really need to use your head and plan accordingly to every single mission. This game starts very, very easy, and it stays easy if you get the gist of it for the first half of the game. Then, little by little, it starts to get hard then way too hard, challenging, but you know, it's one of those games that make you keep trying over and over again until you beat that damn mission. Yeah! I know I sound very excited and passionate about it, but it's just that it's a great, great game. Totally recommend it, and also digital only. Number 1. Yggdra Union Another game that, in my opinion, is absolutely terrific. I forgot to say that the previous game was the work of the fusion from Sting Entertainment and Idea Factory. But Sting, by himself, once again takes the throne in this top with his masterful Yggdra Union, an overwhelming strategy RPG with a very unique battle system. This one's another port from a Game Boy Advance original version, but I prefer this one for the same reasons as Riviera, practically. So here you have several characters under your command, and they each have their own platoon or small army that will fight in a real-time button-smashing strategy that's just crazy enough to be actually amazing! The story is excellent as well as are the graphics, the music and everything else. I'm not saying it's the perfect game, because it does have some parts that, that require a strategy guide or a walkthrough, I'm serious, but it's almost a masterpiece. So I strongly recommend this to all those strategy fans out there looking for something unique, original and challenging. And the PSP, I think in my opinion it's the best portable console when it comes to JRPGs. So many great JRPGs for this console, so many. The last three on this list Totally, totally recommend it. They're amongst my favorites now. Okay, guys, that's it. As usual, I want to thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. So, see you next time.